folks and welcome to Join to Christ Ministry. Today I would like to ask you to examine yourself in the light of the Word of God. What I mean by that, so often uh, we don't even realise but we look at the reflection of the world upon ourselves and that's how we compare ourselves. We compare ourselves to other people. We want to look like that other person or if not better. We see our true, our actual reflection. The world is your reflection, my reflection. And that's why we live our Christian lives. And that is wrong. Like what I mean is, you would get up in the morning and you would say to yourself, I look rough today. Look at the state of my hair. Look at whatever. And that's how you compare yourself. You who class yourself as a Christian. But when have you ever got up in the morning and looked in the mirror and seen your true reflection and said to yourself, my soul is filthy. Probably not a day in your life you've ever done that. And that's the way we're meant to do, what we're meant to do. We're meant to examine ourselves, not by appearance, not by the reflection of the world and other people, but by the word of God. We're meant to examine ourselves in our true reflection. We're made in the image of God. He made them male and female. And that is our image bearer. But we're so lost. We class ourselves as Christians and we don't even realize that we're not even Christians. You know, Christians is like, I'm a Christian. Okay, nice to meet you. What's your name? That's it. We don't test the spirits any, the way we're told in the Bible. We, we don't see. You'll know them by their fruit. You understand? But we care li so little about that. Because we're doing exactly the same. Now we need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to the basics by examining ourselves. Like King David. He asked God to examine him. And if you are a true follower of Christ. Many Christians don't even know what that actually means. But if you are a true follower of Christ. Then you, the, 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 the most scariest thing you could actually ask God is to examine you. Because you know what he's going to find. Even though he's already found it in you. But to bring that to light in your own conscience and ask God to examine you, that can be very, very scary. Because you know what he's going to find. And you don't want that removed from your life. You would rather live your Christian life and go on church, go to church on Sunday. And that's your deed done. That's your meal ticket into heaven. That's your free ticket into heaven. Isn't that right? Well, wrong. Wrong. If that's the case, you're going straight to the pits of hell. Not everyone who comes to me on that day and says, Lord, Lord, will get into the kingdom of heaven. Now, because of your many people's laziness, pride, especially pride. Pride is one of the worst sin. One of the worst sins there is because it's hidden and you don't know when it's creeping up. And you don't even know when you're expressing your pride. And it's so dangerous. Like if another fellow Christian corrected you in something you were doing wrong. How would you respond? You understand? Fools despise correction. And you got to examine yourself in all these areas. Would you be willing to go out on a whim and tell another Christian if they're doing wrong and living wrong? In the sight of the word of God. Or are you going to use the excuse saying, I'm just as bad as them. So how am I to judge? Well, why don't you go examine yourself, correct yourself, and then take the plank out of your own eye. And then go to your fellow brother or sister who are not living according to the word of God the way they should. And then correct them. That's the way it should be done. But no one does that anymore because they're too lazy to even examine themselves and to change themselves. 
You may say, I can't change. Who said you can't change you? You're right, you can't change. You can't change a damn thing. But with the, the Spirit of God, you can change the world. If you help him, if you let him help you and work in you and live in you and dwell in you, then you could be the Lord's and Saviour, Jesus Christ's eyes and ears and feet and hands and arms and you name it. You can change the world if you let him do that. You know, just going over certain things that you should examine and correct. And even in myself, I need to do all these things. By no means have I accomplished it. <laughs> them all. No. But what I'm saying is, just say, for instance, that uh, the Bible says, love, thy, love God with all thy heart, mind, soul, strength. Everything you have. Now, we haven't fulfilled that our most important commandment that there is. That the Lord Jesus Christ commanded us to do we haven't fulfilled that a second in our lives not for one fleeting second we have accomplished that at all so when you realize that truth you've got to ask yourself am i living correctly am i living according to the way that i am commanded to do in the bible for we will all appear before the judgment seat of God. And we will all be judged for whatever we've done in the body, whether good or bad. Now I'm asking you, are you sure? 100% that you're going to make it? Or have you been fooling yourself? Have you been living on the fence between the world and the bride of Christ, which is the church. Christ's people, have you been living among the, 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 the true Christians and then going to your friends or part of your family and living the way they live? You know, they're looking upon you and they think that's what Christianity is. What hope are you giving them to change? Zero. You're making them a tenfold of hell that you already are. You understand? And when it says, love thy neighbor, I mean, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Well, I don't love myself. So what does that mean? When Jesus tells me to love my neighbor as I love myself, well, I don't love myself, so what am I going to do? The only way I can love myself is if I love God. And I can't love myself unless God himself dwells within me. And even then, I may not love myself. So what does that actually mean? Well, love your neighbor as yourself. What, what, how would you like to be responded to by your neighbor? If you've done your neighbor wrong, how would you like your neighbor to come up to you and respond? That's the way you should be responding to them when they do wrong to you. So the next time you hold a grudge against someone, and by the way, your neighbour is those on the street. It doesn't mean the, the Mrs. Mary who lives next door in 22. It doesn't mean that. Your neighbour is those in the world. That is your neighbour, the stranger in the street. Love them as you love yourself. How would you like to be treated? You treat them exactly the same way. Do unto those is the way you would like to be done unto you. Now we can't even bear ourselves to do that. Simple thing. We can't even pay courtesy to the strangers or the homeless in the street. And damned us if we see a homeless person in the street and we just pray for them and say God help them. While you should be letting Christ work through you to help that homeless person. So these are just little details of being an over random stuff so you and I can examine ourselves in. So that will do for now. And this has been Joined to Christ Ministry. And until next time folks, have a good one.